Y'all, today we are cleaning a scimitar oryx. When I say scimitar oryx, don't you think there should be some like, like wicked pose, like, like that, or maybe like scimitar oryx, something like that, because it's such a wicked cool critter. Ha! Welcome everybody. This is me checking to see if I'm in the frame, closing the gate, and then walking over and stopping the record button. So, we'll pick it up from here. Rule number one in skull cleaning, make sure to remove as much meat and tissue as you can before the boil. As you know, this is a scimitar oryx that was harvested free range in West Texas, and the gentleman wants to have it cleaned up hence me having it. So I'm gonna remove the eyes, any of the loose meat, whatever I can cut off with a knife, it's coming off. Now this thing had been sitting on a trailer in the sun for four days prior to getting home. And I just took and soaked it overnight in a pot to rehydrate all that loose tissue. I'm a little worried about all the staining from the oils in the skull coming clean of course, it's not as exotic now that I showed you the finished product in the beginning, but that's neither here nor there. Let's just get everything clean and get it in a pot and get those horns off. Step number two, we're going to go ahead and boil that skull. What I'm trying to do here is boil as much horn as possible because I want to remove those horns First, remember, when you're boiling horns, no chemical in the water, just straight water. Always double check that you're not having that flame come out around the pot and burning those horns. Step number three, you want to remove the horns. And no, you don't have to make a horrible face like I'm making here. I can't tell you how hard these were to get off. It's because I couldn't boil the entire horn. The key to any black horned straight animal or straight black horned animal is the twist. So what I'm doing here, I'm just grabbing it with everything I got and rotating them. There's a membrane between the horn core and the horn and you're just trying to separate that membrane. So I get the first one off here. I cut the horn core short. Yes, there's that little nasty dangly at the end. And the other one is hurting my hands so bad, I gotta grab something to kind of get it twisted around. About midway through me blowing out a blood vessel, you can hear a snap. And I thought, oh no, did I, at, did I crack the horn? What did I do? I turn it back the other way, I hear the snap again, and it slides right off. I look over the horn in and out, and essentially what happened is I broke the horn core inside, but it was enough to remove that sheath or the horn, if you will. So I cut them both off, and now we can get started with the skull washing portion. I set that skull back in the pot, less the horn cores, so it's submerged down in that water, and then I wash those horns in and out, and I'm ready to pull the skull out and start washing. Now I use a power washer and I like to spray into every hole in every orifice. Anywhere there's meat or tissue, make it go away.
I had somebody recently tell me, man, you make it look so easy. And I said, yeah, that's the power of the edit. It's really not that easy. At this point, I like to remove the ear butts, the auditory bull. I take a screwdriver, I stick it down that ear canal, and I pop out that big chunk of bone. Then I take what I call a wafer bit, I think maybe a paddle bit or something, just in five eighths or seven eighths, and I wallow out that hole. It makes a real nice smooth hole in that skull. And then everything that's connected in there, you can absolutely spray into and wash clean. Now, the reason I didn't put these down as actual steps is because they are optional. You can choose to not remove those earbuds or not remove this nasal cavity. It's entirely up to you. I believe you cannot get the skull clean with them in there. I also catch quite a bit of grief because I don't show a lot of this nasal removal. It's slow. It takes a little bit of time, but essentially I take these long forceps. I stick them down those little curly Q nose bones and I twist them out. When I pull them out, you get all that nasal membrane. Everything that's up in that skull comes with them. It leaves a nice clean cylindrical look. Now, so many people love the nose bones in there. You can do that. You can leave them in there and there's stuff in and behind there. As long as you get it clean, meaning dried without bugs in it, that's entirely your preference. I'm not trying to sway you one way or the other. Do what you feel best. This is a faster, cleaner method. In my opinion, let's keep washing. Once you're done washing, the last little pull out piece is the brain liner. Now, thanks to my good friend, Russell Cunningham, he told me that's called a Dura Mater. D-U-R-A-M-A-T-E-R, -E two words in reference to the brain liner. Put your forceps in there, twist, 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 and pull that hunk of goo out, and then slide everything into a batch of White Bone Creations color. That's two parts water and hydrogen peroxide mixed. I'm just going to write it out and put it in the description. Use that as your best judgment and then bring that whole thing to a boil. Bring that peroxide solution white bone mix to a boil and then turn the heat off as soon as it hits a boil. From there, pull it out and power wash off all the loose debris, everything that's on that skull that you missed. That mix is whitening and degreasing and giving it that beautiful, iconic white look. Then set it out to dry and we'll pick up here in a minute. This skull is a classic example of a skull that was skinned and allowed to dry. And you can see how all this dark stuff is all oil that kind of not kinda, all oil that's soaked into the bone. I brought this peroxide to a boil. I gave it uh, maybe 10 minutes, pulled it out. I could see this. So it's been sitting in there for now an hour. It's about all I can do chemically. So I'm gonna just wash it real good, let it dry and see what I'm up against. Um, if you don't have to, it's hard now traveling from state to state, not bringing in brains and hide, but you don't have to leave that hide on until you're gonna process the skull. I've got some uh, some Bondo here. It's black because I accidentally brought bought the uh, fiberglass resin Bondo. Stop, bud. And I've already dry fit these horns right and left. So this is the right. This glass stuff is junk. I hate it. But I bought it, so I'm gonna use it. I'm also going to do something I don't typically do. I'm going to run a screw in the back of the horn, which I have been doing on all the sheep. Right. Let's go on the right.
Next film, super cool animal. Back in West Texas, 100% free range scimitar oryx. Cool freaking critter. Fun fact, and again, I could probably check it, but uh, I believe the scimitar oryx went extinct in South Africa. Maybe the wrong word. Maybe they were down into numbers they just were very, very low, and they were able to rebuild the populations because of the numbers of scimitar in Texas. That is proof positive that sharing critters in different regions keeps a species alive. Scimitar oryx. Look at them horns, man. Boom. Cool critter. This is a female, and yes, it is free range. Some of the neighboring properties where they actually have these fenced or estate hunts or whatever, a lot of times they'll just get through the fence. Whether somebody leaves the fence open or they get over and around them, and when they get on these other properties, they like to uh, slim them down. So, there it is, start to finish. My two cents, my continuous forever two cents. Don't skin them until you're ready to put them in the pot. If you have to skin them and remove stuff because you're going from uh, crossing state lines, keep them hydrated. Take them to the car wash, get them wet, wrap them in a bag, get the brain out. The brain is your stink. The rest ain't gonna bother anything. It can all go bad. Eyes, brains, primarily brains. Get it out and everything's good. Thank you for watching. Scimitar, wait, Scimitar Oryx.